man, oh man, let me tell you, if you are a Rescue Rangers fan, I have no idea what you're going to think of this. Golly! What's been up with you? You know, this, that, other vague things to fill the space of this conversation. Andy Sandberg and John Mulaney are Chip and Dale. Finally, they listen to the fans in Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers the movie. And if you watch closely, you might actually see some Rescue Rangers in it. They're only together as a group for maybe a minute at the end. I think you can tell pretty quickly this is not going to be a traditional Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers movie. Let me put it this way, if not having a mystery in Scoob really bothered you, this is really going to piss you off because the Rescue Rangers are barely together in it. But there is a rescue, so there's that. If that's your main focus, maybe you'll be okay with this. This is as much a Rescue Rangers movie as Adaptation is a film version of The Orchid Thief. It's used as an outlet for this satire on Hollywood life and kind of has been life. My big thought about this movie, at least going in from the trailer, was that it had to pick one or the other. It either had to be pure cynical satire, like a Hot Shot or an Airplane, something like that, or it had to be something that had more heart than good jokes to it, like Zootopia. Zootopia did have commentary and satire, but the main focus was around the characters and their connections, and that sort of fed into the satire and the commentary. This one tries to do both, which is what I was afraid of, and it does work just enough. But there are some problems, at least, that I have. What's the first thing that pops into your head when I say Chip and Dale? Well, certainly not the vast majority of this nightmare imagery. <laughs> Chip and Dale had this hit show back in the 90s, Rescue Rangers, which, by the way, I was a fan of. I liked the show, but it's not something I see as, like, sacred text. I thought it was charming, but it's not something that I say, no, this is an amazing formula, and these are phenomenal characters. No. It's a good show for kids, so I don't mind them playing around with this. If you are someone that really, really loves that show and doesn't want to see the formula changed, avoid this at all costs. But I think you'll know that just from seeing the trailer. They had this show, they broke up, Dale went on to another career, well, kind of career, it didn't really go anywhere, and Chip went into insurance. Again, you can get the kind of vibe this movie is, but Monterey Jack, one of the Rescue Rangers, is kidnapped and they have to find out what happened to him and it leads to this whole underground crime world of bootlegs where we get to see Peter Pan, not a parody of Peter Pan, he's actually Peter Pan in this, who becomes like this crime lord of these bootlegs. You two come poking around where you don't belong and I can't have that. Still a more authentic representation than this. These are the writers of SNL and my crazy ex-girlfriends. So you can tell they have a good satirical mindset and they're obviously using Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers, the show, as this outlet for the story of these two has-beens who are trying to get in control of their life again. Like I said, it's not really Rescue Rangers as much as Disney Afternoons Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but that is a funny idea, and I think if you're familiar with this setup of actors who are has-beens and they're trying to come to grips with that, you've seen this formula before, but you do get something like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood that breathes new life into it, and that's almost what we got here. There is legit heart in it, there is legit comedy, but there's a few too many times where they push it a little bit in the wrong direction. There's two and a half problems with this. I'll get to that half in a second. My first major problem with this is Chip. He's actually written great. A lot of this movie is a very good, strong, solid script with good jokes and a lot of heart to it. But A, the way he's animated is ugly as hell. It's ironic because they make fun of the Uncanny Valley. They actually go to this part of town called the Uncanny Valley where everyone looks a little strange and a little off. They have the cats from Cats there. While that's very funny, Chip is the Uncanny Valley in this. You look at him and it's clearly this 3D animation where they just put some really bad looking lines on him. And there are a lot of scenes in this movie where you can tell it's hand drawn or, or maybe it's flash animation, but you can tell somebody had a pen in their hand or a tablet or something and they drew it. But having this ugly 3D model of Chip with just these really faded lines around him doesn't work and it looks artificial and it doesn't feel alive. Surprisingly, Dale has a lot more dimension to him because he gets the CG surgery, which is very, very funny, but 
that's also CG. CG is supposed to look more realistic. Hand-drawn is not supposed to look realistic. It's taking something we acknowledge as real and reducing it down to the simplest form, a line. That looks alive when you have other drawings combined with it, bringing it to life. When you just have a puppet, a CG puppet, and you move it around, it looks awkward. Sometimes they can really make it work. In Spider-Verse, they really created this new, interesting style that really worked, but they're not doing that with Chip here. I was always more of an Alvin and the Chipmunks person. You monster. Yeah, they are so above them. Streaming now on Disney+. Plus. But on top of that, the voice acting I don't think was right for him. John Mulaney is very, very funny, but he's really given into this character he's created where he always has this tone of voice that's great for stand-up and great for something that's super, super cynical like Big Mouth. It's this voice that's very aware and he's always kind of doing a mock performance. So when he tells a joke, he's in on it. And that's great. He makes me laugh a lot. I really enjoy him, but when you get to the sentimental parts of this, when you're supposed to actually believe this is a guy who used to be a celebrity, now he's in insurance and we're supposed to feel for him, that is not the right voice. It is too cynical. Live a little, you seem excited about this. Don't die. Surprisingly, Andy Samberg works as Dale. Again, he's kind of the doofus in this and he does bring the comedy as well as heart to it. And the scenes where they do have to really connect and think of the good old days and have the arguments and stuff work just enough because you do have a connection with them. They show the meeting in school and the very basic setup of the goofy one and the more grounded cynical one, of course does work. And it is nice that it isn't 100% just a slapping on of Rescue Rangers on a totally different movie. It's actually kind of similar to this poster where you just take something else and slap Chip and Dale on there. But at the same time, they do get down the very basic characters that one is more grounded, one is more optimistic and goofy. The other thing that was really distracting to me was this cop character played by Kiki Lane. First of all, she looks 15. There's a scene in this where she says, I remember watching you when I was a little girl. I'm like, you're, you're still a little girl. What are you talking about? Her acting in this isn't awful, but it's not very believable. And for something this strange that's trying to bring this believability to this very satirical world that's supposed to have heart to it, really doesn't connect. And I just don't buy her as a cop at all. But thankfully she is a side character. So you're saying the rescue rangers are back? Yes! <laughs> Again, kind of a lie. This brings me to the half part of what I think works and doesn't work about, and that is the callbacks to other characters. I'm not just saying Disney characters because surprisingly, this is kind of the ready player one of Disney properties. South Park, My Little Pony, Shrek, a lot of characters I would not expect to see in a Disney property ever. I mean, these are like competitors, so I'm really wondering how they got them. But even with that said, while they do utilize them, most of the time in funny ways, sometimes they're just there just to be there. And once in a while, that's okay. But then you feel like, at least in the last third, even they're not understanding the jokes they're making with the references. There's one scene where a firework goes off and it makes the Disney symbol and they play When You Wish Upon a Star. Why is that funny? Why was that supposed to get a laugh out of me? During some action sequences, you'll see him run across a bunch of My Little Ponies or the father from South Park. And I remember thinking to myself, well, if you're not doing a joke with that, why are they even there? Why pay the copyright money to have them in this if you're not gonna do anything with them? It's very odd. Professional. <gasps> Same time. <gasps> Jeez, you owe me a non-brand specific cola. What? Most of the humor works. And then they'll do satires of films like Jurassic Park or Terminator 2, like really old films that came out decades ago, but they don't really connect it to the nostalgic feel of what they're doing, which is bizarre. It feels like this came out 30 years ago when that would have been topical. But with that said, some of the things they do with some of these IPs are so clever and even kind of brutal. I won't give away the funniest one, but it's a character that sits across from Dale at a convention 
and it made me laugh so hard. I adored how he worked his way into the story. It wasn't just there for jokes. He actually legit works his way into the story, but that's an example of working with the joke. It isn't just a character that you recognize and you say, ooh, I recognize it. They do turn it into a joke. There's a genuineness to the other people in the booths at the con that Dale is at, and they actually do help out later on because they do form kind of a friendship, and I really like that stuff. That is something that is kind of unique to the film and feels very, very authentic and kind of touching in a weird way. What are you looking at? Honestly, your weird dead eyes. <laughs> Did the remake of Lion King actually have the balls to say something looked lifeless? Now to the credit, I think that's part of the joke because right after other Seth Rogen animated characters peeked in that did have kind of weird dead eyes. So again, I think they're onto the joke with that one. And there are a lot of jokes like that and the majority of them do work. When you get those couple that don't, they are awkward, but they don't ruin the movie by any means. And I think the main characters do ground it enough. You do care enough about them that you want to see them make amends and get back together. But I feel like this could have been another Lego movie. This could have been another Into the Spider-Verse because the writing was so clever and actually did have legit heart to it. I just wanted to see them actually be more sincere with it. So let's give it three out of four giant 8-bit robotic dogs that aren't giant at all. With that said, I'd love to know what you think about this, especially if you grew up with Rescue Rangers or a big Rescue Rangers fan. Were you open to this? Did you like the way they played around with the characters, particularly the main two characters, because there's not much of the other ones in this? Did you like that they turned it more into a satire and commentary? Or do you feel like this is just a betrayal of everything that was innocent and wonderful about Chippendale Rescue Rangers and they should have made it more for kids and more charming and light? Or are you somewhere in between? where you think some of the comedy works and some of it doesn't, but eh, it was alright. Let me know what you think and I'll see you next time. Take care.